On behalf of Wyville United Church, I would like to welcome you all to the worship service. We will get together remotely in body, but Jesus will surely join us in spirit. At first Sunday of every month, we will be collecting food for the food bank. In Bible studies, Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We'll begin our worship with the land acknowledgement. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. We are gathered on the traditional territory and acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. The opening hymn is A Love Divine or Love's Excelling. Please join me with a call to worship. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who thirst for justice, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for justice's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. 
opening prayer and then we'll have a Bible, uh, Bible lesson. O oh God, you turned things upside down, calling the wise to embrace your folly. Help us to grow in acknowledging our need for you. Open us to the vision of your reign on earth and strengthen us to do our part. We offer you our adoration, our acclaim, and our very lives as we worship in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture lesson is Micah 6, 1 to 8. Let's, uh, let's read in unison. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear your mountains, hear you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have, in what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I have brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak and Moab devised. And what Abalam, son of Abel, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Kilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with the burnt, burnt offerings with the calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with the thousands of rams, with the tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? To do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. And today I'm going to talk about Christians, our fundamental biases. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. O poor peasant stopped at the elegant house of the bishop. He was dirty, hungry, and tired. The bishop told the housekeeper to draw a bath for him. By the time he had finished his bath, dinner was ready, and the bishop sat with the travelers. They had a good visit. The peasant was a very poor. A few years earlier, he had stolen a loaf of bread, been arrested, and sentenced to 30 years in jail. He was now on the journey home. After the visit, the bishop told the maid to lead him to the bedroom. The bishop was quite concerned about the future of the middle-aged ex-convict in that pre-revolutionary France. 
When the bishop awoke early next morning, the maid reported that the police officer wanted to see him. When he went into the drawing room, he saw his peasant guests in one corner. He seemed to have been on the road for a while. The police officer opened the traveler's bag and showed the bishop the contents. By his words and actions, the police officer said that he had become suspicious of this poorly dressed man, nervously carrying a bag early in the morning. So he had stopped him and checked its contents. The policeman said, This man said that the bishop had presented these to him as a gift. I just wanted to check with you. The bishop looked at the silver candlesticks for the altar. The policeman wanted to enforce the laws against the theft that were then in place in pre-revolutionary France. The police officer was trying to bring the man to justice according to the laws of the pre-revolutionary friends. But by his actions, the peasant was showing that he was asking for social justice and fairness in the distribution of goods, especially food. On the other hand, the bishop is supposed to be responsible for upholding religious justice for his Lord. In his mind, he must have been thinking very quickly about the conflict between various types of justice, social, legal, and religious. Those were the longest few seconds in his life. Now we leave the story from Les Miserables and turn to the teaching of the Lord whom the bishop serves. Under the pressure of the moment, the bishop cannot review all teachings of the Bible related to theft. He can think of Ten Commandments they prohibit theft, but do not have a clear-cut answer when it comes to a social injustice. Theft is not right, but neither is the deprivation of the peasant who cannot feed himself and his nephews and nieces. The bishop is well aware of that. It also prohibits a false testimony. And however, it does not prohibit a false testimony for a good cause, for the sake of a victim of social injustice, reasons the bishop. He gropes for an answer in the gospel and turns to the Beatitudes, that short summary of his teachings had been given by the Lord to his disciples right after he had chosen them. In the same manner as God gave the Ten Commandments to the Hebrews as they were escaping from slavery in Egypt. The bishop used to recite the Beatitude word for word, but this morning he cannot remember even the order. But he does remember the key words. On the left side, there are words like poor, mourn, meek, hunger, merciful, peacemaker, persecuted. On the right hand side, there are promises of blessedness. He likes the promises 
a column, but finds it hard to accept the condition of a hardship on the left hand side. Especially hard to swallow is the equation of a poor person with a citizen of a kingdom of God. Here standing accused before the bishop is the poorest man of the poor who certainly will be taken back to prison for only God knows how long. Here is also a police officer who will see to it that this poor man is condemned to serve a number of years in prison instead in the kingdom of God. And that there is no possibility of the French royal family would have anything to do with the clemency for the peasant. As long as the beatitude remains in the future tense, there are easy lessons. But as, as soon as they are read in the present tense, they require immediate action and a decision, just as the bishop was challenged to decide about the peasant and the candlesticks. The author, Victor Hugo, has the bishop utter these famous phrases. Ah, there you are. I told you that you could have the silver candlesticks. Why have you returned them? Then what he said is true, says the policeman. The officer left. The bishop and the thief stands face to face, and bishop speaks slowly. Zhang Valjean, you belong no longer to evil, but to good. I have purchased your soul with these silver candlesticks. Thus the French Revolution began in a bishop's drawing room 20 some years before 1789, when a bishop made the conscious choice to stand with the ex-convict and to claim him as a child of God. One irony jumps out at us when we read the Beatitude in the present tense. The blessedness promised to Christian believers and to Jesus' humble, modest disciples cannot automatically be expected to appear today and make our lives simpler and easier. Instead, it pushes us more and more in our daily lives to strive to reverse the timing of the coming of the kingdom so that every day, everyone today can experience the blessedness of tomorrow rather than waiting for it in the hereafter. The soul of each of us has been bought by our Lord for his own candlesticks of light. We are all declared sons and daughters of God to see Jesus in those we meet every day. We are going to have a prayer of the people. Uh, we'll end it with the Lord's Prayer. The middle of the uh, prayer, and of the sections uh, which begins with the four and ending together. So your response is, may we see and find another way. May we see and find another way. Let us pray. God of all goodness, by glimpsing something of your vision of a just and merciful world, we become acutely aware 
of how much inhumanity and suffering still exist in the world. It would overwhelm us if we were not for the tender beauty and hope that arises each new morning and shimmers from the heavens at night, and so from grace the places of gratitude and wonder we pray. For on earth staggering under the weight of global warming and deforestation together, may we see and find another way. For people staggering under the weight of poverty, violence, and loss together, may we see and find another way. Four nations staggering under the weight of pride and a need to impose their will. Together, may we see and find another way. And the four Christian church staggering under the weight of a seeming irrelevance within secular church cultures. Together, may we see and find another way. Let us continue to pray in silence as we bring our own concerns, community, nation, and world. Ukraine, Middle East, God of all, honor the desires in our hearts, and may they flourish within the people of grace and compassion we seek to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the closing hymn is, What Does the Lord Require of You? It is a very short uh, hymn, um, and I found very uh, helpful uh, YouTube uh, link. May we find Jesus in everyone we see today. May everyone we see today see Jesus in us. 
It's a musical benediction. Walk with me, I will walk with you and build the land that God has planned where love shine through. Love, walk with me and I'll walk with you and build the land that God has planned where love will shine through.